Wowza. So, okay, what's going on, dudes and dudettes? I know probably a lot of people here know the results of the USC versus Arizona game this last Saturday, but I'm going to wait till the end of the video to have a little bit more clarity and have a bit more room to be able to pontificate, whatever the heck it is, on how or what my thoughts are on the game. Now, I felt stirring after, you know, the whole shebang because it was a pretty much a roller coaster up and down the whole entire time and yes like i said i will get to it but speaking of usc yes they did still sort of say in the top 10 they did move back one spot again from number nine to number 10 officially which is kind of weird but after the results of the game this saturday but i guess you just have to stick with it because like i said the ap poll doesn't really like usc football this year even though they're still winning somewhat but i don't want to spoil the later topic but Yes, we did see that Duke did move up a couple spots as well to number 17, even on a bye week. So that's pretty cool for them. Excuse me. Still no true official word on the quarterback Riley Leonard and his injury that I haven't seen officially pop up yet. I know they have a game this Saturday against North Carolina State, which is a pretty big time rival for them. So I don't know if, that'll, if he'll be available for that game. I know they've been talking a lot about this backup quarterback so maybe he might miss this game and be able to come back eventually soon here but either way it's still going to be a tough test for them on their way for the rest of the season especially if Riley Leonard does not end up playing and then I guess a couple of Duke guys were facing each other in some preseason NBA basketball yesterday and it was Marvin Bagley and Grayson Allen. Marvin Bagley did go off. He had like 25 points and 7 rebounds as well while playing for the Detroit Pistons. That's pretty cool. It was a lot in like mop-up, you know, end of the game time. So at least he did most of what he could with that time. And that's what you're supposed to do is, you know, show what you can do against the lower end competition. And so he does look like he's going to be a bench player, at least for Detroit as of right now. And of course, Grayson Allen played most of the early parts of the game and into the middle. Didn't really play towards the end because he is one of their better first guys off the bench and of course he did very well also had like 18 points three assists and three threes as well making plays out there and yeah like I said once I saw he was part of the deal and got traded to Phoenix I knew it was gonna suck because he's on one of the Lakers divisional rivals and he is a really good player, even if people don't like some of its antics here and there that he used to do. He hasn't done any of those things, <clears throat> excuse me, as of late, except that Caruso play a couple years ago. But that was, to me, that was still, you know, if you're a basketball player, I guess it's a, a play you're not supposed to do, playing that type of defense. But to me, it was just a contested shot as usual, and just, just so happened that the guy got hurt pretty badly. But... Either way, because it's Grayson Allen, it's, you know, pumped up to 11 on the hate scale. So, either way, I still think he's going to be a really good piece for the Phoenix Suns, which is hard to say because, like I said, they're in the same division as the Lakers. And, of course, it was his birthday. I think it was yesterday or some point within the past couple of days. So, congrats to him making it another year. But, yeah, like I always said, it does suck that he has not been on the Lakers lately. And Tom DeLonge's new movie, Monsters of California, recently was released this last Friday. It was in like a couple handful of theaters, like 10 or so, some odd theaters throughout the country. There is like one in LA and San Diego, but those are just too far away for me to go and, you know, spend that much. I'll probably be, sp be spending more money on gas than the actual ticket. You never know, because sometimes tickets nowadays are crazy. But yes, I still have not seen it. I know. It's available to rent and buy like on Apple TV or Amazon Prime as well. So I probably will rent it on Prime. It's probably like seven or eight bucks just to finally check it out. But yeah, especially on those Apple charts, it's been going pretty crazy. They did have some good stats. So they're like number two in the independent area, independent film area, number three in sci-fi, number 10 in action films, and number 19 overall far as buying that product or that movie so that's pretty cool for him I don't know his Amazon numbers but yeah to get two of the big companies that's pretty good for him to get that movie out there and you know obviously hearing a lot of good stuff and a lot more people are doing reviews on YouTube about it 
random people, which is pretty cool too. So I have those saved in my watch list. I haven't watched them yet because I don't want to be spoiled. And I think even the soundtrack, which was helped, made, and produced by the drummer of Angels at Airwaves and his brother, who is a producer that helps make the CD, the music, and all that stuff for Angels at Airwaves now, they basically pretty much made the soundtrack and the instrumentals and all that stuff. So I haven't spoiled myself and listened to that yet. So definitely looking forward to hearing all that. But yeah, hopefully... Hoping it's at least a good movie. It doesn't have to be a great movie. It's hoping to, to check out what Tom DeLonge has as a director when it comes to live action. So we'll see. And some more miscellaneous news before we get to the nitty gritty. So yes, I think it was, it's either 12 or 14 year anniversary. I forget which one it was that I saw on X for May Day Parades Anywhere But Here. This was my introduction to this band and they still have been going on since then they even had a couple cds right before this album i knew i only was starting to listen to them because when i was watching espn at that time they would play a song going into their commercial break and then they would show like at the bottom corner the artist and the name of the song whatever which was pretty cool because if you like the song then you're able to look it up easier compared to nowadays where you kind of just have to listen to see if you could hear it again at some point but yeah, I looked it up, I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty good. It was called Get Up, and it was kind of like a sports anthem-ish song, even though I think it was more about partying and, you know, moshing and all that stuff. They're not like a hardcore rock band. They're more of like the alternative, you know, pop punk, you can say, but definitely more like alternative, like 90s, you know, rock bands when you think about it, to be honest, because they're a bit more... On the emo side, but not like that crazy emo stuff. It's just more of like the lyrics and what they sing about and more of their true feelings and, you know, some of those fake people out there. But, yeah, that was my introduction to them and I've still liked most of the music since. Yeah, so definitely check them out if you're willing to listen to Mayday Parade's album. That's probably not their best album, but they definitely have a lot of definitely 20, 30 plus good songs out there, in my opinion. And yes, this Saturday's game against Arizona for USC was pretty big when it comes to their future recruiting, especially in the 2025 class, and especially on the defensive side. But I did mention that a lot of guys were going to show up, and here's just a small list of who it was. The 2025 linebacker Nasir Wyatt from Modern Day was there. The 2025 cornerback Dejon Lee. 2025 safety Jonte Gilbert from Ohio was there. And the 2025 cornerback Chuck McDonald was there as well, and I mentioned him in the last video. He's another modern day player, and John Lee is close. He's like Mission Viejo or somewhere out there. And most of these guys are predicted to go to USC, but of course, since they're on defense, and I don't know how they're predicted to go to USC with how bad the defense has been the past couple of years with the defensive coordinator Grinch. But I'm pretty sure if they get somebody competent enough to play to be able to be their defensive coordinator next year, even if they fire, you know, Grinch. And I think these guys will still come to USC, but that has not happened yet. So we'll just have to wait and see. Cause I think if Grinch is still there, then we won't be able to keep a lot of these future prospects in my opinion. But it was pretty important that John T. Gilbert was back. I think it was his second time visiting. I don't know if it was an official visit cause he is the 2025 class. So technically he's still like a junior. In high school, not even a senior yet, but pretty sure next season he will be back for an official, official visit. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they gave him the red carpet treatment and a lot of, you know, ex pleasure there. Lendell White, Matt Barkley, a lot of like the basketball team was there, even Bronny James and Isaiah Collier. Women's basketball team was there. So yeah, it was a pretty big night, even though, you know, it was a lot of crap out there for the USC football team. But like I said, I will get into that eventually. And of course, as I'm writing these notes down, I forgot to put the name of the player who's the number one 2025 running back, but I think it's something very, forget, excuse me, being a professional here. But yes, he did recently put USC in his top five. And obviously it's a long ways away because he is a 2025 running back. But I've seen this before. They had the 2023 <clears throat> or 2024 maybe number one running back commit, you know, saying he was wanting to go to USC and Taylor Tatum, and he chose Oklahoma a few months back. So 
I don't know if he's using USC as leverage here to try to get some more money or whatever from other schools, but yeah, I just hate being used when it comes to recruiting in USC, but if they do end up getting this guy, it's, there's a bit of a higher chance just because Tatum did not go to USC, so there's, you know, more open spots other places than, you know, where this guy can go. So hopefully he does end up picking them at some point. And then, yes, there is Julian Lewis. He once again did go off pretty crazily. He had like a 400 plus yard throwing day with six touchdowns. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. And yeah, obviously, like I said, it was pretty amazing if they could still be able to get him. And if he does come a year early as well, that can help. But yeah, hoping that this guy does end up on the USC's roster at some point. And yes, oh, the dog is scratching and she's of course next to the light. Yes, USC is six and oh. All that build up for, yes, they did win, but it did come at a cost because it was barely a win. That's why they ended up moving down in the rankings. And I did say right before this game in that video that I did believe Arizona was going to come to play just because, okay, yes, the score was 43-41. to 41. I always end up forgetting something but in the, when I post up the video. So, yes, 43-41 to 41 in triple overtime. And yes, like I did say, it was going to be tough because a lot of the players for Arizona now are California guys, and especially from pretty good schools in Servite, and the, uh, I forget the quarterback's name, Afidi or something like that, but yeah, he's a smaller dude, but he's still pretty athletic and lit up the defense. You think he had like five touchdowns and an interception, but... Of course, he did good, and Ted Aurora McMillan, the top wide receiver that they have, he's like 6'4", he did really good as well. I don't think he scored a touchdown, but he had like almost 150 yards receiving. But another guy that was really good is Jacob Cowing, who ended up staying there and didn't decide to transfer, but of course, USC got what they thought was the best receiver from Arizona and Dorian Singer, but Singer hasn't lived up to the hype for some reason and has not looked good at all but Cowing looked great I think he had at least three touchdowns a two-point conversion as well yeah he just looked awesome he looked like you know a top first or second round pick against USC but who doesn't when you're going up against that crappy defense that they're not crappy players it's just they're placed in bad spots and that's you know coordinator and all those coaches and stuff but yeah other than that yeah, the offense, let me just look at my notes real quick. The offense was freaking horrible, too. Like, it's one thing the last couple games, they've been slowly not been able to run. I think Arizona State was the last time they went really good. And then even Colorado, they were stopped a lot. They didn't get, I don't think they got over 100 yards in that game. And this one, they especially didn't, unless it, was, it did come late. But, yeah, Caleb Williams was off. It just seemed like... He was either trying to make a big, gigantic play and try to, you know, because he's in the spotlight and on ESPN or I don't know what it was, but it was a, a late start anyway. So nobody on the East Coast was watching at all. And yet they were still trying to make plays down the field and you had to get the ball out quicker. And there was easier plays like closer to the line of scrimmage that he wasn't making or short drop offs. And he was just trying to make a big play. And anytime he did scramble he did get out and when he did run for positive yardage that was good but him trying to make plays in the pocket and stuff it just wasn't good I'm just trying to wonder too if they're just holding back a lot of this offense to not show exactly what they're going to do because these were the, supposed to be the easier games this first six and the next six are going to be more of the gauntlet because you get Going on the road to Notre Dame, then you get <clears throat> Washington at home at some point, you get Utah at home at some point, and you got to go to Oregon up there and play. And there, those, all those three teams are ranked, maybe not Utah anymore, but then you play UCLA at the end of the game or end of the year, who just had a big time win against Washington State, who was ranked in the top 25. And I think you play Cal at some point, who isn't a pushover team either. They like to play hard against USC too, and they have some players there. But yeah, overall, it was bad. They even had a chance to win it on a field goal at the at the, at the very last second. And of course, even leading up to that first down play, they just had to run the ball to still continue to kill the clock. But Caleb decides, I'm pretty sure it's RPO, so he had the option to give it to the running back or pass it. 
he passes it, and even the receiver's like, what, what the heck are you doing? Like, why are we throwing the ball here? He wasn't even looking for it, and it just went to his feet. He's just lucky that the defender wasn't paying attention either. And then the very next play, it was a handoff, but it's like one of those weird, you know, spread option ones. It's not like where you get the ball from underneath the quarterback's or the, the center's butt, whatever. But, yeah, I guess Caleb, the quarterback, thought the running back was going to get it, and then the running back thought he was going to get it. So it was a fumble, basically, but luckily Caleb jumped on it. And then, yeah, to, to get that last field goal off, it was like too high of a throw. Then the the spotter wasn't able to put it down long enough, and then the kicker just totally whipped on it. So at that point, I just assumed the football god said, yeah, USC is going to lose this game no matter what. It was an amazing finish, though, because after the first overtime, you score a touchdown, you get your extra point. Then after that, you have to go for two, basically. Yeah. I forget if it's after that or after the second overtime. Yeah, I think that first one's regular. Then you have to score a touchdown again, which is what both teams did, but they missed the extra two-point extra point because you have to go for two in the second overtime now. And then after you get into the third overtime and farther, then you just go for two-point conversions. You don't start from the 25, so you start from like the three- or five-yard line, and then you try to get the, the one play in for a touchdown, basically. And USC did it barely. Caleb got it like right at the last second, you know, right at the edge of the touchdown. Running in himself, and then uh, USC's defense stepped up and stopped a play that had been hurting him pretty much all game. So either way, it was a really bad up and down game, but I don't know. <clears throat> we'll just see what ends up happening because I know Lincoln Riley did say that they have the number one offense in the country, so they shouldn't be worried, but. You did that. You did those numbers against crappier competition than what you're going to be playing. So I don't think you could hold that as high as you think you can. So yes, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great day. Bye. Bye on.